Hi there, welcome along to the Intercontinental Hotel in North Greenwich. Yes, just one day to go until the bad blood will be settled once and for all between Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark. We are coming live to you tomorrow night on Sunday night from the O2 Arena in London and we have a stacked undercard as well. And the drama has already started. It's not just about the drama in the ring. Johnny Nelson, Andy Clark and Matt Macklin. But we've also had a bit of news overnight that the, the ring has been stolen <laughs> out of the Ringcraft van. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that's, now that's news to that's me. That's a genuine thing. Yeah, it, it, it's gone. They must be some deep pockets. Deep pockets and also very planned because it's not an easy thing to steal. And if you have any information, please go to Crime Stoppers or something like that because it's serious. If they can't find an O-ring, just get a telephone box <laughs> <laughs> and then a cloak. <laughs> We're outside here. That's outside the, that's the here, yes. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, we move on. That is something that will be solved. There will be a ring on Sunday night. Um, this is a fight. I was in my car coming to work, and it is a fight that everybody is talking about. Everyone's got their opinion, and everyone's opinions are swaying, Johnny. From yesterday, how are you seeing it? Do you think that maybe Fabio Wardley, is he trying to get under Fraser's skin? Is he, is he managing to do so? I think he's been doing that from the off. I think he is getting under his skin. Uh, I can probably say it now because Fab, uh, because Fraser's not here. Uh, you know, Fabio's been treated like like the the A side. You know, he's in the nice hotel. He's uh, getting all the treats, and uh, and he's, give, he's putting a bit of a chip on uh, on Fraser's shoulder shoulders, and the pressure's on him. He doesn't like the fact that he's got to try and he's got to talk himself into a fight with this guy. He's got to risk his reputation with this guy, this white collar fighter. You know, but professional boxing and amateur boxing are two completely different things. The difference between Fraser and Fabio is Fabio has shown what he can do in public. Fraser had them. Fraser sparred with all the best. Joy Joyce, Hansen, well, Jumping. He's got the brother. amateur pedigree, hasn't That's he? Right. But and he sparred with the best. Fabio's got the experience in the ring. He's 17 and 0, both undefeated as well, but Fraser 8 and 0. What do you think that could be a bit of difference on Sunday? Yeah, possibly, because he's just more seasoned as a professional, but at the same time, the Olympic Games is a lot of pressure. Keeping that number one spot on the GB squad is a lot of pressure. It's relentless, physically, mentally. It's a lot to deal with, and he's dealt with that for a long time. And I personally feel like Fraser has got more relaxed the closer we've got to the fight. I thought he was on good form yesterday. He was happy to talk, happy to talk at length. He had a bit of fun with Fabio. He thanked him at the end for the opportunity, all those kinds of things. He just wants to get in there and get this on now. And I think the nearer we've got to it, the more at ease he's become with the whole situation. He's very, very confident. And when you look at what he's done, he has good reason to be confident, but he understands that this is, this is huge for him because he doesn't have much time for setbacks given that he turned pro quite late and he needs to win. It's as simple as that. Matt, you, you've been saying, I've, I've heard you on social media saying that you perhaps think maybe Fraser could have been in the amateurs too long. That could maybe be a negative thing for him. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, look, the, the positives is he's picked up a lot of experience fighting against top calibre, calibre opponents, you know, WSB experience. They're like, you know, five, three minutes now. They're like pro fights against top operators. But there is a difference in the amateurs. You're looking to score points with your punches. You know, you're, you're, you're almost pulling out as you land the shot because, you know, it's quickly. We're in the pros. People are sitting down on the shots. They're looking to take people out, break them down, you know, get the knockout. So, you know, you see it with a lot of people, that, 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 especially the turning pro a bit late. You know, it, it have, they've got, they can't stand. It's, it's harder for them. They make a mistake. If there's a setback, it's a longer road back. And with Fraser, the age he's at, the pressure on him is if he loses, it is hard to see where he goes. Now, if he was 23 years of age and he lost at British title level, it wouldn't matter. He, he can learn and come again. Well, I think if, he lo if Fraser loses on, sat uh, on Sunday night, Sunday night, <laughs> then it's hard to see him coming back where, you know, Wardley could probably stand the loss and come back. So the pressure's on Fraser. Um, and I, and in, with regard to staying amateur too long, I just think you get, style-wise, he might have been in that system too long and it, it's hard it's harder to make the the uh, adaption that he needs to make. Who do you think the pressure's on more, Johnny? Fraser, without a doubt. It's got to be. It's a win-win for, for Fabio. If he, if he wins, you know, he's a, the, the star constantly rises. If he loses, he can say, well, what do you expect? This guy's got... He, he's expected of him. Everything I've done was never expected of me. So the pressure is definitely on Fraser. And uh, it's, a, it's a professional pressure that you don't like but it comes with the game, comes with the territory. Fabio said it, didn't he, and the gloves are off about 
should Fraser lose, losing to someone that came through the ranks through white collar and just how much that would hurt F Fraser? How does he go and inspire the, the, the amateurs that are representing the UK around the world, you know, to do this and make you a better pro? Then losing to Fabio Wardley, a guy that's, that, that's had no, no uh, amateur experience. The only thing you can say is, the amateur game and professional game are two completely different games that do not expect the same success you get here when you turn pro. How do you think Fraser's handling the pressure? How do you, how do you think he's dealing with it, Fraser? Like I said, I think the closer we get to the fight, the better he's dealing yeah. with it because you're used to that kind of treadmill when you're always competing as an amateur. There's always another tournament around the corner and it is just something that's a constant for you. It's a conveyor belt that you're on. And, I think what a lot of them find quite difficult when they turn pro is the gaps between fights and not getting the opponent necessarily you want and then you get to fight night, it's not quite what you want it to be and you're frustrated and then you're waiting for the next one. The rhythms of the two things are completely different but I think as we've got closer to the night, he's settled down and he's thinking to himself, OK, I've done this plenty of times before, not on a big pro show, not headlining, but I'm going to pull on a pair of gloves, I'm going to walk up the steps and I'm going to give it everything I've got. And maybe that'll be enough, maybe it won't be. But he knows what this is. But there's a lot riding on this fight for both. I mean, neither of them really wanted to go into too much detail when we, we asked them, are they looking beyond this? But you, you can very much tell they are, aren't they? There, there is in the back of their mind. They know who they want to face next. They can't afford to overlook each other. Of course they can't. But they know just how much it is riding on Sunday Yeah, night. well, look, I don't think either fighter feel this is the pinnacle for them. That they, they see this as a, a step towards bigger and better things but obviously whoever loses again I think if Wardley was to lose at this level he can come again you know and because of his age where I think Fraser because of the, uh, the build up he's had the pressures on him you know he, his age if, he, if Fraser loses it's, uh, it's difficult to see where he goes and they were obviously due to fight last April wasn't it last year and then the team around Fraser decided no not quite the right time they wanted to get him more experience he's had He's had more time to marinate, which potentially could be a good thing. But again, that, that adds the pressure onto Fraser a bit, doesn't it? Massive pressure for Fraser. Fraser was embarrassed. He was upset that he was pulled out of the fight because it made him publicly look like, as a fighter, no fighter wants it to publicly look like. I think that happened in Birmingham fight. and he said he just went home and he was yeah, is yeah. really, really frustrated. Yeah, exactly. And then in hindsight, he said, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have taken the fight. I think the two fights in between then and now, what difference would he have made? He's still, you know, Fabio's 17 professional fights. You know, Fraser hasn't, you know, he's just about over half that. So now it's just about that, holding the nerve. He's learning so much about the pro games now, Fraser, in regards to this kind of pressure, career kind of pressure, big fight pressure. And this is the stepping stone, because what about when it comes to the Commonwealth or European? This is domestic bragging rights, and that's why it's a different kind of pressure. I know you say that Fraser's eased into the fight week, but... We have seen a more sort of spiky Fraser up until that now, which we haven't really seen. And then he said last night, didn't he? He said at the press conference, everyone needs a dance partner. And do you think Fabio could be that person to bring out the best in Fraser? Will we see the best version of Fraser? We have to. Yeah. We have to. And I do think we will because we talked about it yesterday, but preparing for fights early in your career, Matt had a similar kind of route through although he turned pro a lot younger he was a very very good amateur turn pro to you know a good amount of fanfare you have the learning fights and you would have known that you were going to win those fights you want to look good and win that's that that's the key but this isn't about that now this is just about winning and the camp he will have had Fraser he will have had that fear and motivation of what happens if I don't win haunting him all the way through and you need that and that, that's what will drive the performance out of him. He mentioned that didn't he about his camp saying you know this has been the best camp I've had but because he's got that fear factor yeah. now which we spoke about yesterday has given him sort of the extra dimension in his training. Yeah I mean that's 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 what makes you push that a bit harder because you're not thinking oh how good am I going to look when I win you're thinking I absolutely have to win defeat becomes utterly utterly unthinkable but you know it's not impossible. I always found when I was concentrating on performing well as opposed to just winning, I box terrible. When I, when I just focused on winning, I performed well. Yeah. You know, so I think Fraser, the fact that he's not under pressure to beat him quicker than someone else did or to look really good, you know what I mean? He's just focusing on winning more rounds than he does and to get the win, that'll probably make him perform to the best of his ability.
there have been two sort of different personalities this week because Fabio has loved every single minute. He is a fighter that just loves the media attention, doesn't he? He enjoys the fight weeks, he enjoys the gloves are off. He really does sort of thrive in this atmosphere, which is a benefit going into such a big fight. The ignorance of youth is absolutely <laughs> no idea, and which is a great thing because he's enjoying it. He's enjoying all of this and enjoying the attention, whereas a lot of fighters that have been in this game long enough, you think, I don't want this. But he, he's, 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 the, the ignorance is there, so he's actually making, he's working for him. He's lifting him, he's making him a better fighter, thinking, I want some more of this. Whereas on the other hand, the older fighter that's been in this game for a long time, he's had the pressure on him whenever he's boxed to represent our country. He's, he's niggled with this sort of stuff. He's niggled with our, our probing questions. He just wants to get out of here, get weighed in. Get out. And you, you saw that in the, the presser yesterday. He just said, look, you know what, thank, thank you. And he, you could see he didn't want to be there. He didn't want to be there anymore. So which is better? Is it better to be spiky? Is it better to be, I just want to be getting in the ring on, on Sunday? Or is it better to be, no, no, I'm enjoying this. I'm thriving in it. I don't uh, want it to end. I, I, I actually, you enjoy it. You produce cameos of brilliance. And I think that's what Fabio will do uh, until all of a sudden he has a reality check at some point through the fight. What kind of fight do you think we'll get on Sunday between the two of them? I think it might be quite cagey early on. I don't think anybody's going to want to fully commit too early because they will be wary and respectful of each other's ability and power as, as fighters generally are a heavyweight. You don't see that many heavyweight fights where they both just come out of the traps at a high level anyway looking to let their hands go because if you get caught with one early then it can be over before it's even started so I think they will have a good look at each other Fraser feels like there's plenty of gaps to exploit with Fabio because he is quite an open unorthodox fighter and I feel like he will want Fabio to come to him I don't know I think it might it might, might take a little while to really catch fire but I think it will at some point what do you think Matt? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's cagey early on. Um, but also, I think maybe Wardley might want to make his presence felt early as well, certainly, just to try and stamp his authority on the fight. I think with headlining for the first time and it being such a big occasion for them both, it, is there a lot of sort of... The, the feel, the need that you, you want to produce that statement performance, you want to get the big knockout, and, and, and can that make you cause mistakes and can that be a negative on the night? Everybody, everybody on the bill tonight, as far as they're concerned, if they're thinking like real fighters this show is about them not just the headline, everybody thinks it's about me, I'm going to steal the show, I'm going to get the sensational fight, get the sensational knockout you need to have that mentality when you get in there, usually when you go for the knockout you don't get it, when you go to do what you can do best, you get the knockout and you can look well doing it, the one person that, that's willing to gamble and gamble to the stage where I'm going to show off and get the knockout, even though I don't know I'm going to get the knockout, is Ben Whittaker. And, and so far, so good, he's got away with it. So the two headliners, they think, of course you want that. Of course there's pressure on. But what's most important here, out of it all, is winning. That's what's most important for Fraser. What, that's what's most important for, for Fabio, is winning. And it is the British and the Commonwealth titles, Matt, on the line. The British title, as we know, we've seen some absolutely belters of fights when the British title's involved. And I imagine tomorrow night will be no exception. Yeah, and look, I think the fact that this is really Fraser's first proper fight as a professional, first time he's boxing somebody that's not just coming to him, but believes that he's going to win, you know. Again, I think that will bring the best out in Fraser. Now he's in a proper fight, so... Uh, look, if he wins, he'll be British champion. That's a massive achievement in itself. But I do believe that both of them believe it's a, you know, it's a step along the way. It is a grudge match and it's a, a rivalry that has been building. Why is it we like these so much? Because when it happens, you think it could happen time and time again. It's a rivalry that could go on and on and on. Why do we like these so much? Everybody just loves any kind of rivalry that's got a good backstory to it, that's got a good narrative to it that you could trace through and you can work out what happened. And there are alternative theories about what actually did happen. There's, there's their side, there's the other side, and then somewhere in the middle there's the truth. And you'll come down on one of two sides. So by the time the fight happens, you kind of have your horse in the race. And that's what we want, isn't it? We want people to tune in and pick a team and invest in it a little bit. And when you've had the kind of lead into a fight that we've had with this, that's what you get. Yeah. And that's why people love all British rivalries because you know, these are two very different people in terms of their personalities, I think. And 
you've got plenty to identify with in either one. Whatever personality type you are, you'll find something in one of these two that kind of that resonates with you. Anna, you know what? You look in the crowd, and this is how much of a uh, um, how, how, how exciting it is. It's 20, 30 deep. Yeah. It's it's the Easter weekend. You know, so most people are with their families at home celebrating Easter. This is how exciting this fight has got. The fight's not until tomorrow night. Over, so right now, you've 13 or thousand tickets sold as well. Exactly. So, so Fraser, at this stage in his professional career, has put himself in such a position to, to be the fastest heavyweight to win the British title if he wins. Just look at that crowd. And, and there's more outside. Yeah. And this is such an attraction. It's for the British title. It's a great build, but it's for the British title, and that's why, if you understand how much it means to fighters, if you understand how much it means to fans, you'll understand what the atmosphere is going to be like tomorrow night. Well, today is all about the weigh-in, and the fighters obviously will step on the scales, face off for the final time. Well, what do you think we'll see from both of them today? I mean, will, will emotions spill over, or, or do you think it, it's, it's past no, that now? I don't think yeah. so. I think both will be super professional. They'll jump on the scales. You know, a bit of a face to face, probably shake, maybe shake hands, maybe not. But I don't think anything, I don't think we're going to see any theatrics. Well, that's the main event. I, I, I have a feeling that there might be a couple of fighters that we'll see have a bit of argy bargy up there. Uh, Florian Marku, Chris Congo, that, that, that's been bubbling nicely, shall we say, this week at the press conference. There was verbals between the two of them. Yesterday, a bit of back and forth, and I imagine, Johnny, that's going to continue up there today. I think Florian, was, those two. Florian was great at pre trying to press uh, um, Congo's button, saying you've come here looking like a preacher, and, and Chris Congo was so cool. He said, I'm not fighting. He, he kept his, kept his, got to keep his form. That's how he needs to fight. He needs to control the time, the pressure of the fight, the pace of the fight. And, and, and Florian is brilliant at drawing you in getting into his argument. So Chris, when I saw him, how we held this cool, I thought, you need to do that. So I think today, if there's going to be any any shoulder barging or, or blue language, it's from those two guys there because there's a lot on the line, ego at stake. And what is happening outside of the ring probably will continue in the ring on, on Sunday night in terms of it, it could really catch fire, that fight. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Chris is the more technically proficient fighter of the two. And Mark, who we expect will be more aggressive, but he doesn't always do it like that. There's a bit more to him than, than he sometimes shows us. And sometimes it can be a little bit of a, a subterfuge. I just really like these two as a pair. I think they're quite a kind of... They're quite the, the, a comic... The perfect blend, aren't they? Yeah, they're quite a comic the odd couple, score. aren't they? I, I do kind of get the feeling that these two, after this is all over, I think they'll get on OK, because I think they look at each other and they find little things about each other quite entertaining. But I do think it's a fight that's going to really give us something, particularly in the second half of it, because Congo, I wouldn't be surprised if he's up at halfway, but then he's got to make sure that he digs in there in the second half. He got overrun a little bit by Echo Esselman yeah. in this last fight, and Echo Esselman is legendary for his, for his engine, but he needs to be wary of that. I don't think, Johnny, it's, it's just going to be Roy Marku and Chris Congo that are going to have back and forth. Steve Robinson and, and Babich, the savage, they were having a good go yesterday. And that is, I mean, if you're going to watch a fight, it's, it's on, it's on it's early doors. You need your popcorn for that one because it, it, it's a must-watch fight. Yeah, well, I, without being critical, neither of them are the best boxers in the world, do you know what I mean? So I, don't, I think they're going to slug it out pretty much from the first. But I don't think either... Great got, viewing. No one's going to get on the back foot and try and outbox the other there. It's just both of them are going to have one tactic and that's try and knock the other guy out. That's <laughs> pretty much what's going to happen, isn't it? I think with those two there, you know, uh, Babbage, last time he boxed was one round last April. Absolutely heartbroken, devastated, had to go back, lick his wound. Steve Robinson, who you're looking at there, he's a fighter that's, that's, that, that now is obsessed with boxing because he wants people to respect him as a boxer. And so he's took the losses, it changed him as an individual. So you've got two fighters that are scarred by their losses that are trying to create a new impression. The size difference is ridiculous. The, 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 the fight in both fighters is very well matched. Now it's about the character. Now Babbage, I thought he was less unpredictably scary yesterday, whereas the one that was serious was Steve Robinson. His mum's somewhere here in the crowd. His aunt is here in the crowd. He's bought family. You don't do that if you think you're going to get turned over. So, so I think that is going to be an exciting little fight. Uh, another fight we're looking forward to, Ben Whittaker taking on Liam Wiesme. That That's going to be a fight. Ben, we saw him go viral, didn't we, after his fight with Brady or with his 
his showboating and he's got the talent in the ring. It's been so far so good for him. What do you want to see from him on, on Sunday? Well, look, he's a very slick boxer. Uh, and he showed he can punch a bit too when he gets the accuracy, the distance right. So, uh, look, he should be way too good for this kid he's fighting. So I want him to show that. You know, don't don't carry him. If you're, you're the level you tell us we are, we think you are, go out there and prove it, show it. Whereas Leon Williams, he, he's looking at this. He's 23 years old. He's looking at this as a real opportunity, isn't he, to try and upset the party against Ben Whitaker. Of course, and, and, and it is that. But at the same time... It's very, very difficult, this for him. He's won an area title. That is a good achievement. He's certainly game. I spoke to him a couple of days ago. He understands the scale of the task here, but it's very, very hard for him. And he needs a plan. He needs to try and stick to it. He needs to try and not be distracted by what's happening in front of him um, with regards to the showboating, which the extent of which we don't know what we'll see yet but you know he's been consistent with that Ben Whitaker all the way through his career it's not for everybody and he understands that I think he knows he that knows we, had, we discussed it yesterday um, but that is what he does and it, it's a tough job for Leon Willings it's 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 a tough tough job you always want everybody to come out of that ring feeling like they've given a good account of themselves and having had a positive experience and I really want that for him OK, well, the way in is just about to get underway. Big Mo is ready and waiting. So let's hand you over to him for the introductions. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Intercontinental Hotel, as today is the official weigh-ins for tomorrow night's stacked card live from the O2 Arena, headlined by the main event for the British Heavyweight Championship. Promoted by Ben Shalom and Boxer, it will be live worldwide tomorrow night, live on Sky Sports and NBC's Peacock. Following the Man City versus Arsenal game, you can tune in for the fights live from the O2. We begin our weigh-ins with our opening heavyweight contest tomorrow night. Promoted by Boxer in association with Platform Sports. We would like to thank our headline partner today, Bet365, and our official partners, Everlast, Integritus Property Group, Fastline Steel Services, Val Nutrition, and Car Finance 24-7. Introducing first to the scales, he comes to us from Newcastle, England, standing 6 feet 7 inches tall and a professional record of 6 victories versus 2 defeats. Please welcome Stephen Drago Robinson. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. Official weight, 17 stone, one pound for Steven Robinson. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner tomorrow night. He comes to us with a professional record of 11 victories with just one defeat, with 10 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Zagreb, Croatia. He is known as the Savage. Here is Alan Babbage. Official weight, 15 stone, 7 pounds, 5 ounces for the Savage. So what's going to happen in that one? Are we just going to see a slugfest? Yeah, I think so, because when we saw Babic in Poland last year, he tried to do it differently, didn't he? His, his coach, his new coach at that point, was talking about him boxing, and it looked like he tried to get out into the middle of the ring and get on the jab, and, and he got knocked out. So I'm absolutely certain he would have walked away from that experience, saying to himself, that is never, ever, ever happening again. And he will go back to the way he's always done it. We spoke about earlier about... The heavyweights, you know, they're the one that produced the knockouts. They, they want to make the statement. They want to put on a show. And I think between the two of these guys, they, they both want to do that, don't they? Yeah, not just want to do it. I think that's the only thing they can do. You know, neither of them are natural technical boxers. They're, they're, just, they're, they're, they're aggressive. They can punch. I think Alan Babbage is more... Uh, proficient, I think Steve Robinson's quite raw, but he can bang. I think someone's going to get knocked out, and I think it'll happen early. Interested, Johnny, to see see what happens here. 
I think both fights are very intense. Both fighters, they understand where they are, where they stand. You've got Dylan White in the corner. He's uh, Babbage's uh, mentor, um, works with Babbage Strong, but there's no nonsense. Babbage isn't biting. Steve wants to bite, and he's got to show that intention. It'd be, this fight would be good. It'd be good from when it starts off. You can't not like either of them, and the Savage is a character, isn't he? He's a, he's a character that everyone seems to like. Yeah, absolutely. So Steve, so Steve Robinson, and that's why this is just a really good match. This is going to be an interesting fight. It will be good to watch. I have absolutely no doubt about that at all. And there's just something, we always say it, but there's something about heavyweights. Whatever the level, they know what they're risking in there. They know that they're going to get in there, let those hands go, roll that dice, and whatever happens, happens. OK, well, the Savage has just popped his tracksuit on and he's ready to speak to Andy Scott. Let's hear from him now. Alan, you're nearly there now. That was a, a good face-off with Steve Robinson. On the scale, he's giving away about a stone and a half. That's not, it's not really surprising. Will it make a difference on fight night? I always give. I give him more. I will give him everything he wants, you know, because he doesn't care. It will make zero difference. What did he say to you at the head-to-head? -head? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Right. <laughs> so, and, what, and what did you say to him then? I said to him, OK. <laughs> Let's go. Will you give us a reason why we should watch this fight more than any other? I know you always want to steal the show, so how can you do that tomorrow? Well, believe me, I said to, to Ben Shalom, I'm going to steal this show, and I plan to do just that. You know, I'm going to steal the show. It's going to be very explosive. It's going to be forever a joke, like I always do my fights. Brilliant. Well, we wish you all the best of luck, and let's bring Steve over. I'll ask you to step one way just to avoid any last mishaps. Steve, got a few supporters in the house as always. You've got the, the height and the weight advantage. Uh, does that matter or is it just chaos when that first bell rings tomorrow? It's chaos. Height, weight, nothing matters. The, what, what matters is you've got two people in the centre of the ring and he's getting knocked out. There is obviously a, a language barrier between the two of you. So what did you say to him at the head to head there? He's nervous. He's moving all over and he went... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. You think he is nervous? Definitely. And how are your nerves? I'm never nervous. I'm sound. I'll be chilling in the back, listening to Disney. Sound. Will you give us a final prediction? Knockout. First round. Good stuff. Wish you all the best. Thank you. That's a big prediction there, isn't it? Knockout first round. But I love even more the fact that he's backstage Ladies listening to Disney. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. I love that. Everything about it. I think the word Steve Robinson just summed it up perfectly there, what the fight could be. Chaos. Did you hear the crowd gasp when he said knockout first round? First round, yeah. Big, big prediction there. And one draw with 29 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Please welcome Dula Mbabe. Official weight, 12 stone, one pound for Dula Mbabe. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner tomorrow night. He is undefeated with 13 victories and no defeats with nine of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Barnsley, South Yorkshire, England. He is the former Central Area Super Middleweight Champion and the current reigning WBA Continental Super Middleweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Callum Simpson. Official weight, 11 stone, 13 pounds for Callum Simpson. Callum Simpson against Dula Mbappe. Simpson there on the scales. Well, both fighters looking at it in great shape, but Callum in particular. Yeah, I was talking to Kevin Marie a couple of days ago, his manager, and they were talking about how his last couple of fights, he's boxed to order, he's worked on things they've been specifically targeting in the gym, whereas for this one, as he described it, this is for him. They're going to let him off the leash and let him go out there and express himself, enjoy himself, whichever term you want to use. And that is interesting because 
you don't always get the opportunity to do that. They feel that he's he's done the hard work that they wanted him to do, and now they want to see him really go through his whole repertoire maybe tomorrow against a good, decent, durable opponent. Yeah, Simpson, it, it, he's been time on time, fight on fight, improving, 11-0. and 0. He's got the confidence, he's got the momentum behind him. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, he just needs to keep winning, keep doing what he's doing. Um, you know, this is a fight he should win. He should be able to look good doing it. He should be able to get his shots off. Uh, but his profile, his development, it's all moving in the right direction. And um, for Callum, Johnny, he knows, should he come through Sunday night and come through it well, that there are some really good fights out there. Likes of Zach Chelly could be waiting for him. Zach Chelly, he's got his eye on Ben Whitaker. Yep. Um, you saw the press conference yesterday where, you know, once Ben, once he was interviewed, he, he made sure he took reference to Ben. Um, uh, but I think Callum's a very, very good talent. A talent that we haven't seen the best of yet. I think, I think yes, you like the likes of Zach Chelly. It's probably the be- the next step for him. I think it's a really good fight. So, what are we going to see from him tomorrow night, Callum Simpson? Uh, I think you know, put it all together. Everything he's been working on, all the new moves, all the sort of aspects he's been adding to his game. Just try and put that into. Yeah, put it all together, put on a, a hopefully a career best performance. It is such a good card, top to bottom, Andy, that for every fighter they will be looking to grab the limelight tomorrow. It is such an opportunity, all eyeballs on them, to, to, to put on the show. Yeah, it absolutely is. And, you know, he's opening the, the TV part of the show and we know what's potentially coming next for him. So he wants to really stamp his authority, give somebody, give everybody something to watch and then get them to tune in, I think, August time. All right, OK, well, Callum's ready to talk to Andy. Let's hear from him now. Callum, great to have you back on the show. A uh, chance for you to cement this sort of reputation as an up-and-coming fighter that you've got already. What do you need to show us against Mbappe tomorrow night? To be honest, I want to get in there and get rid of him, early preferably. You know, my last, my last two fights have come from, a, from gone, to, gone to points. So this fight, you know, I want to show that I'm explosive, I've got that power, and then keep pushing on to a bigger fight in the summer as well. Got to be careful, though. I think he's got 85% knockout ratio. He's been in there 49 times and only stopped twice in pretty good company. Are you confident you can add your name to those? Yeah, I believe so, definitely. Is that a little nod to championship weight as well? I think the fight was made at 12-1 and you've come in inside the super middleweight limit with one eye on Zach Chelly next just to show everyone that you've got that big frame that you can do it. Yeah, exactly. I've had a few fights where I've been, where the fights have been made at just, just over 12, and I always make sure I come in under 12 stone. You know, I tell my manager that I want to come in and show that I'm professional. Whether it's, if the fight's at 12, I make sure I come under, come under 12, even if it's 12 1, to show that I'm, you know, I can make super middle, let everyone know that I make, it, I make it well as well. A few fans in the house already, and plenty coming tomorrow. Just a nod to the Barnsley fans. Yeah, yeah, you know, some, some family, good family and friends have come down from Barnsley. Uh, some of you are yesterday and uh, the today as well. So, yeah, big thanks to you a lot for your support. Where are you all? Where are you? Go on, you reds, you reds. <laughs> Good on you, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move to the light heavyweight division, scheduled for eight three-minute rounds tomorrow night here in London. Introducing first to the scales, he holds a professional record of seven victories versus just one defeat, with two of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Cheshire, England, please welcome Leon Willings. Official weight, 12 stone, 9 pounds, 5 ounces for Leon Willings. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner tomorrow night, he is quickly becoming one of the biggest stars in boxing today, holding an undefeated professional record of six victories versus no defeats, with five of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Darleston, West Midlands, England, he is the former Olympic silver medalist. Please welcome Ben the Surgeon Whitaker.
Official weight, 12 stone, 9 pounds for the surgeon, Ben Whitaker. Never in doubt, Matt, for either fighters, both of you in great shape on the scales. Yeah, yeah, fantastic shape. Um, yeah, I just want to see Ben put on a good performance, similar to what he's been doing recently, uh, and just, again, keep, keep his career moving. What, what kind of problems, if any, can you see Leon Willings causing Ben tomorrow night? 23, only lost once in, in his eight-fight professional career. Well, he's a game fighter. He'll be committed. He's got a good left hook on him. Um, he landed that on Jake Barton in his last fight to win his area title, put him down heavy with it. So he's got some power. Uh, he does pose a threat, but he is quite open. And he's got to try and be as compact as he can, go out there with a game plan and just try and stick to it and not pay too much attention or worry too much about the person he's in there with, if that makes any sense. Because I just get the sense that if he thinks too hard about Ben Whitaker, then that's Bugin. he's going to find it very, very difficult. Very difficult indeed. One thing we can tell you is to expect a very, very special ring walk indeed from, from Ben tomorrow night. Always looks, look forward to seeing him. He always puts on a show. This is a very interesting face-off. Ben just staring Leon down. Who's going to have the last look? Johnny, so much hype around Ben Whitaker. Social media has blown off the scale since his last fight. How much of a talent is he, in your opinion? He has to dazzle with discipline. Um, uh, the discipline will always be his, his, his trump card. Has a discipline, but has the dazzle, and and he has the character to pack it in with. If he keeps performing like this as he goes up in, in levels, you know his stock will grow massively. Uh, the expectation will grow massively. And a lot of people will be here just to watch his ring entrance. You know he's, he's, he's creating a good business to about himself. Yeah, he is a showman. The, the showboating, he has the play, he has the skill, but as we've spoken about just, just earlier on, the showboating, it has divided opinion. He, he is Marmite. What, what do you think about them? So far, no, he's backed it up. I, I love it. And the, the fact that he's, he gra he's a grafter, he, gra he works hard behind the scenes, and people don't realise that, but he covers it with the showboating. All right, OK, well, Leon is ready to talk to Andy. Let's hear from him now. Leon, you look great on the scales up there. How did you feel? Good, mate. I um, feel good. Ready to go, yeah. I'm not a great lip reader. All I could hear you say is, we'll see. So what was it that you two were uh, exchanging pleasantries up there? What were you saying to him? We were just both saying, we're ready. Um, we'll see what will happen. You know, we're both ready to go. Yeah. Interesting press conference yesterday where it was kind of overshadowed uh, by no fault of your own. You didn't have to do too much. But how are you sort of finding being around Ben Whitaker? Because he can wind people up. He can get under their skin. Uh, you seem pretty laid back with it all so far. Yeah, I, I am. I'm as laid back as he come. Uh, Ben's a big character. But um, I'm just going with the flow, to be honest. But, um, yeah, ready for tomorrow. Yeah, and how does that underdog tag sit with you? It's presumably a pretty good place to be but at the same time the the title of being the first man to beat Ben Whitaker is a pretty good one yeah it, it's a bit big moment um huge moment I'm just I'm ready to go ready to go brilliant wish you all the best of luck thank you for talking to us and uh he seems to have just slipped away he's here he's here don't worry he's coming Ben just a quick word before we let you go Again, you look great on the scales up there. Obviously, preparation has been great with Joby Clayton, your trainer. What sort of performance can we see from you tomorrow? Surgery. That's what I do, man. I'm excited to show what I can do. People are just seeing what I want to do right now, hopping on one leg, having fun. Maybe I'll go out there and really just break him down and hurt him. He said uh, just then, you know, both confident. Do you believe that he is as confident as he says he is? Hopefully. Uh, they're all confident until they get that hit with that first jab, and that's what I'm looking to do. Any reflections on yesterday? It's part of the course now that you are public enemy number one, which I think, having got to know you a little bit, is where you probably want to be. Hey, if they're not calling you out, you're not doing something right. So keep doing what I'm doing, keep bringing them, and I'll keep knocking them over. Is that the promise for tomorrow, another knockout? Hey, another beatdown. That's what it is. Wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much. Pretty self-explanatory there from Ben Whitaker on what he plans on doing tomorrow night. And talking of social media blowing up, you caused quite a stir yesterday after yours, two's exchanges. Yeah, I got home yesterday, 
my wife had to be our little baby girl, so I was doing that for three or four hours. And I looked at my phone and I just thought, what, what on earth has happened here? But um, people seem to enjoy the exchange we had yesterday at the press conference, as did I. It was perfectly civil. Anyone can say whatever they want to about anything I say. You know, that's the position we put ourselves in. And not everybody's going to like the way he goes about things. Some people will object to it. I don't strenuously object, but in that previous fight, I just made the point that you could interpret some of the things that he does as being disrespectful. He doesn't agree with that. We agree to disagree. And we'll see what he does tomorrow. Maybe exactly. we'll see something different. Yep, we'll see what happens tomorrow night. But the most important thing, you both shared a handshake. Yeah, we did. We shook hands at the end. You were goading him into the match there, oh. Walter. I could see it as well. I could just about do don't, my heavy Don't weight. drag me into it now. <laughs> Official weight, 14 stone, 2 pounds for Mikhail Lawal. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, he is the defending champion tomorrow night. He comes to us with a perfect undefeated record of 10 victories versus no defeats, with 6 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Tottenham, England, he is the reigning, defending English cruiserweight champion, and he is the realist. Please welcome Vidal Riley. Official weight, 14 stone, 2 pounds, 5 ounces for the champion, Vidal Riley. 14 stone, 2 pounds, 5 ounces then for Vidal Riley. Vidal making the maiden defense of his English title against a man who is very much on the comeback trail, Mikel Lawal, after losing his British title to Isaac Chamberlain. Mikel Lawal is looking to absolutely get back in the game tomorrow night and has to. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is the perfect fight for both of them because you've got an English champion who wants to fight for the British title, so he's fighting a fighter who has just lost the British title. For the wow, he wants to get back to that British title level and right the wrong that happened against Isaac Chamberlain. And so he's in a high-profile fight with, fight with the English champion. It's, it's ideal every which way you look at it. I think it's fair to say we, we didn't perhaps see the best version of Mikhail Owal against Isaac Chamberlain. Would you agree, Johnny? I agree, I agree. I think because of that, he's going to... We will see the best version of him in this fight because he wants to redeem himself, especially against such a, a, a tricky character. He has the size, he has the experience, uh, he has the, 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 the bigger record. So in his head, the only person that's going to cut in is him. He'll be letting the shots go because he'll be frustrated in the last fight. This is Fidel's biggest fight as a professional and he, he thrives on these kind of fights. Fidel almost looks like he's having a bit of a laugh up there. Everyone, well, everyone behaves differently, don't they, in these face-offs. It's fascinating to see the, the different ways in which people approach them. It is, because I guess, I guess the challenge when you've got a face-to-face is, do you give back the same energy they give you and you buy into that? Or do you think to yourself, actually, you know what, you can go all tough guy, like Mikel did there. He's giving none I'm not of it, gonna, Yeah, exactly, I'm not going to go down that road. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Oh. He, he wears his heart in his sleeve, he's trying to get involved in... And Vidal's not silly. He knows he's trying to wind him up with his, how relaxed he is. No doubt about it, Miguel Awal is fired up for this one. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I think he probably feels, you know, a lot, a lot of regret of his last performance. Um, I think that could make him go a little bit too gung ho in this one. Um, I think because I think if he is recklessly gung ho, then he's going to play into Vidal's hands. To keep his emotions in check, doesn't he? Exactly. He's going to harness that, you know, passion, that aggression. What do you reckon? How about the styles? How will they blend? 
kind of agree with Matt in that I feel like Luau might come out really quick because he just wants to make absolutely certain that he doesn't allow the fight to drift and allow Riley to establish a rhythm that he then finds it difficult to break because he cannot have what happened last time. He just can't. So I think it could be quite an explosive beginning. And when anyone fights like that, particularly at this kind of level, really anything can happen. OK, well, let's hear from Mikel Well now with Andy. Mikel, I don't think I've ever seen you this fired up for a fight. Is that a fact that this is the most motivated you've been? 100%. I'm looking forward to it. He's trying to call me a bully. But after all the talk he's been doing online, I've been keeping quiet. He's, he's, he's the actual bully, do you feel me? So I'm going to come for him and I'm going to knock him out. I'm getting some uh, Marvin Hagler vibes with the shaved head as well. Is this a sign of destruct and destroy? That's what you're coming in here to do. Uh, what's the thought behind that? I'm just like, no, no hair. I just want to go in there, rago, do you feel me? Rago, that's it, man. Rago, going to go in there to beat him up. Are you in a different place from where you were before, Isaac Chamberlain? Is, and is that a good place, if you don't mind me asking? I'm in the best place I've ever been, do you feel me? So I've been, I've been, I've been keeping it healthy, doing everything right outside the camp as well. So this time around, it's going to be different Mikel Lowell. Yeah, we know what a motivated, fit and ready and sound-minded Mikel Lowell can do. You also know the hype behind Vidal, Vidal Riley as well. Are you the man to derail that hype train? 100% want to knock him out. That's your prediction? 100%. OK, they're pretty good odds. Thank you for talking to us. Let's bring in Vidal Riley and uh, just make sure that you have vacated the scene before. You don't need to vacate the scene. Well, just for everybody's benefit, because uh, he did try and snatch the belt off you there at the end, and presumably you're keeping hold of that belt tomorrow night. That's your prediction? I mean, of course. I'm here to defend it. I'm here to hold on to it, and he's got to be willing to die to take it. In terms of percentages, 100% that he's going to knock you out is a pretty good percentage. I mean, he has to feel that way, but, you know... That's, that's him, man. He's going to say what he needs to say. I said he needs to control those nerves. The bully boy himself, he thinks he can bully. Tomorrow, we show what we do to bullies. Is that what the energy you were getting from him, that you did think he was nervous? Oh, he's always nervous. We know this. I'm looking at him right now. <laughs> OK, yeah. Just finally then, I think this is a strange dynamic, that you're the champion, you've got the belt, but it does represent a, a big step up for you in terms of your career. And I was interested earlier in the week that you still use the term people think I'm a YouTuber. Does that completely go away? You'll say when, I'll say if you beat Makalawa. I mean, it'll only completely go away when I stop uploading. I don't want it to go away. I'm just going to put the hands on him and continue to improve in the ring and show why, as much as I do other things, I'm an elite athlete and an elite boxer. You don't traditionally give predictions. Uh, just You say just winning at all costs. But when someone promises 100% they're going to knock you out, do you want to uh, match that? That's his plan. I've got my plan. We worked on our plan. We know what we're planning to do, regardless of what he says. He thinks, all right, cool, I'm going to knock him out because it's the only game plan he can have. But when you're limited, you only have a few options. There's many ways we can do this, and you'll see tomorrow night. Without best of luck. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move to our cheap support bout tomorrow night live at the O2 Arena. Ten three-minute rounds for the IBO Intercontinental Welterweight Championship. Introducing first to the scales, he holds a professional record of 14 victories versus just two defeats, with seven of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Bermondsey, London, England, here is the former WBO Global and WBC International Silver Welterweight Champion, Chris Too Slick Congo. Official weight, 10 stones, 6 pounds, 5 ounces. For too slick, Chris Congo. And his opponent, hiding out of the red corner tomorrow night. He is undefeated with 13 wins, no losses, and one draw. With 8 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Hiding out of London, England, by way of Lucia, Albania. Introducing the former IBF international welterweight champion. He is the Albanian king, Lorian Marku.
Official weight, 10 stone, 6 pounds for the Albanian king, Florian Marku. Johnny, I, I think the roars of the crowd, they've established where the majority of the fans have come from this afternoon. Florian has a, a, a crazy lot of fans. They follow him everywhere and anywhere. He creates excitement in and out of the ring, expectation in and out of the ring. Uh, I think this is the, the fight you can guarantee that'll... that'll like the touch paper, as Adam used to say, in regards to, to, to uh, tomorrow night. Does this have the potential to seal the show, Andy, do you think? I think it does. I think it does, because they're a great clash of personalities, but it's also a clash of styles. I look at Kongu on the scales there, and he's like a greyhound, isn't he? There's yeah. absolutely nothing on him at all. That is hard work for him to make this limit, but he does it, and he does it well, because he looked, physically, he looked good, didn't he? Even yeah. though there's not a shred on him. Marku, shorter a little bit more solid with those kind of long arms on him. I'm really looking forward to this one. I have been ever since they started to row with each other, however many months ago it was When, when the tables got flipped. A little bit of argy-bargy at a press conference. Chris Congo, he's been out of the ring for a bit. He's been out of the ring for about a year. Do you think that could be an issue tomorrow night? Will we see a little bit of ring rust potentially? Oh, it's kicking off. Yeah. I mean, look, inactivity is never a good thing, you know. But I think, you know, as long as he's prepared really well, maybe done a bit more sparring than he normally does, just to get that bit of sharpness, hopefully. But, um, you know, Marku isn't the most difficult person to find, you know what I mean? He, he, he will be there, he's got the reach over him. So I think as long as he gets his jab going early on and gets into the fight quickly, he should be okay. We said it at the top of the show. The back and forth, the... The, the bit of spite between the two of them has been running for a long time and exactly what we've just seen up there is what we predicted. It's always going to happen in this fight and it's gonna, probably going to spill over into the ring as well. It is and security were, were on red alert straight away. They didn't exec expected that anyway but I think, can you imagine what the fight's going to be like tomorrow? That's what I just said. I that's imagine just, it's going to go, just, it's going to continue oh in goodness. the ring. Yeah. And there's certainly going to be a lot of support in that O2 arena. The 13,000 tickets, I'd love to know how much of that is Florian Marku's support. Yeah, and Chris brings some as well. You know, it's um, it's a pretty extraordinary situation that the way he manages to sell tickets, Marku. It's, it's amazing, really. Brilliant to see. Let's hear from him now with Andy. Florian, plenty of energy in the room, but even more energy up on that stage. You're obviously fired up. Your fans are fired up as well. What's your message for all these people that have come out here today? My message is to all the opponents that disrespect me, they're going to pay. Whoever disrespect me, they're going to pay. He, he's going to pay like all my last opponents going to pay for the fight night. I love this game. This is where I get reborn. When I'm fighting, this is what I love to do. And this guy tomorrow, he's going to be shaking because he's a coward. And I'm going to show him inside there who wants it more. I want to thank all the fans that came here tonight and whoever is coming tomorrow, I'm going to show you tomorrow night who I am. Thank you very much. Brilliant. I don't need any more from you. Thank you. Let's bring in Chris. Yeah, Mike, he can come in. He can come in. I think everyone's behaving now. What's your response to that? There's plenty of energy up on that stage there. Uh, probably a few nerves as well. We got him. Listen, we don't draw against a journeyman. Yeah? We don't get knocked down and nobody is going to save him tomorrow. That's the, that's the thing. The British Boxing Board are here. They're fair. They're not going to call the bell 10 seconds before. Because when I knock him down, he won't survive. So let's go. Do you believe they've made a mistake picking you? 100%. Big mistake. This is a big mistake and this is my time. This is all noise. I ain't worried about that. They ain't going to help him. What about a hostile crowd? That don't mean nothing. Crowds don't win fights. Fights win fights, and I'm a real fighter. He's not. Best of luck to you. Thank you. I think Chris is almost enjoying that. 
it did the car. It was the it, it was the storm after the calm because it's been calm all week, hasn't it? Uh, not a midget out of him yesterday. So today, I thought, right, the last time you see me, this is what you expect. Live here in London at the O2 Arena, bad blood. 12 three-minute rounds for the WBA Continental, WBO European, British and Commonwealth Heavyweight Championships. Presented by Boxer in association with Platform Sport, live on Sky Sports and NBC's Peacock. Introducing first to the scales, he is the challenger. He stands six feet, six inches tall. He is undefeated with eight victories versus no defeats, with six of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Burton on Trent, England, introducing the Commonwealth gold medalist and the Olympic bronze medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, big phrase, Fraser Clark. <laughs> Official weight, a massive 19 stone even for Big Phrase, Fraser Clark. And his opponent, the defending champion, bringing all the hardware to the stage. He stands six feet, five inches tall. He is undefeated with 17 wins, no defeats, with a staggering 16 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Ipswich, England, here is the former English heavyweight champion and the current reigning, defending British and Commonwealth heavyweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Ipswich, Fabio Wardley! weight, 17 stone, 5 pounds for the defending champion, Fabio Wardley. And we were just watching there on the side of the stage, Fraser did not take his eyes off Fabio all the way through that way in. No, he wanted to get a good look, didn't he? Some fighters do that. Others just aren't that bothered at all when the others take into the scales. In terms of the weight, Fraser's been 270, so 19 yep. for 19, 5 in his last few fights. 266, 19 stone even. In percentage terms, it's nothing, but it's just a little bit of a shave, isn't it? You know, his conditioning is maybe a little bit better than it has been previously. Fabio, 17 stone five. He's been around that, slightly lighter than that for his last couple of fights. So they're both pretty much where we thought they would be. Johnny, how do they both look to you? I think they both look on point. Fraser weighing in, he's trimmed down, looks in better physical condition. Um, Fabio looks relaxed, he's smiling, he's smug. No different than, than, than any of his previous 17 fights. The, the business is that the hard work's been done now. Fabio, it's always, I mean, it, it, like we say, he's been loving it, he's been enjoying and relishing every moment this fight week. It's interesting seeing the, the two differences. Well, like I said, Fraser didn't take his eyes off Fabio. He seems a little bit more jumpy, he just kind of wants to get it done now, doesn't he, in the ring on Sunday night. Yeah, I mean, look, it's good that he's focused. I don't think he'll be, uh, sorry, I don't think he'll be too intense. I think he'll, I think he's, he'll be able to harness it and keep a call. Uh, I think we're going to see the best Fraser that we've seen as a professional. Um, and Wardley will have to be the best he's ever been to get the win. Well, 
Oh, there's, there's no doubt about that. That's intense. But from the start of the fight, you think it's going to be a cagey, cagey start? I think it could be, but I can also see what Matt's saying when he says that he feels like Fabio Wardley might want to put a bit of a marker down early on and just take it to Fraser a little bit and say to him, listen, you know, I've been fighting at this level for longer than you. I can start at a pace that you're not going to be able to stay with. But ultimately, 12 rounds is a really, really long time, particularly, particularly for heavyweights. In terms of the occasion, the first time headlining for, for both, I mean, how difficult is it for them to keep their emotions in check and to sort of not get carried away with the night? Well, Fraser's been in, the, um, uh, with, in these big occasion situations before, so he's used to it. Uh, for Fabio, who's enjoying the ride, I think both fighters know how much is at stake here. They both know they are the toughest opponent for each other. Uh, and so they both know, you know what, this is, this is, as I say, the journey is as important as the destination. waiting for the fighters to make their way over to Andy. We talk about the antics between the two of these. It's a rather interesting occasion at uh, the football club at Ipswich Football Club when Fabio went down and, and stood on an Ipswich football shirt. Very brave man indeed and has stirred the pot. But again, these two know how to sell a fight, don't they? Yeah, they definitely sell a fight. Remember Ricky Hatton came uh, when uh, Floyd Mayweather came over and put the, the Man U uh, t-shirt on against Ricky Hatton just to wind up the crowd and get him excited. And uh, They've done their job, they've, they've sold the fight, uh, uh, they've trained hard, they've got the job done, that, that's important. Okay, well, Big Fraser is just heading over to Andy. We can hear from him now. Take it away. Fraser, all weighed in and ready to go. That's the lightest since your professional debut and lightest, uh, second lightest as a pro. Is that a sign that things behind uh, closed doors have been taken very, very seriously? They have anyway, you know, the, the weight was irrelevant. Um, I've done my job and, you know, I'm ready to go. You were tapping your head there uh, in the head-to-head. -head. Uh, what, what were you saying there? Just that I'm a clever man. And, um, yeah, I know, I know what's coming. I know what's coming. At the announcement press conference, you did grab the belts. Uh, did you resist that temptation today? No, I've had my feel. I've had my feel. Um, I can get comfortable with them on Sunday night. Well, tapping your head, are you saying this is a thinking man's fight and that you're the boxer with the higher IQ? 100%. Will you give us a final prediction? Yeah, I'm going to knock him out and then I'm going to laugh at his team. Okay, all the best. Let's give him a response to that. Come on in, the British and Commonwealth heavyweight champion, Fabio Wardley, in the proud colours of uh, Ipswich Town. It's a thinking man's fight, and that's what wins the day. That's what he had to say there. <laughs> hey, there's, there's a lot of aspects that go into a fight. There's, there's thinking moments, and there's heart moments, and there's who's, who's really got it, who's really got it in them, and we're going to find out on Sunday if he's... He's, he's done all the talking, all the build-up's been done. We're going to find out on Sunday if he's... If he's got those true colours. You've said he's too emotional. He said he's going to shut your team up. Is that a, a further sign that he's, he's looking past you and, he's t uh, and talking about your team as well? Yeah, look, he's paying too much attention to everything around me. He's paying too much attention to my team, who's here, who's with me, what I'm doing. Stay focused on the job. I've never mentioned his team. I've never mentioned anything of his training, anything he does or something. I'm not fussed about him because I know that 100% the right Fabio Woodley turns up on the fight. I've trained properly. I've done everything I needed to do. I've ticked all the right boxes. He says he's going to knock you out. Do you want to match that or is it just win at all costs? It doesn't matter if it comes inside the distance. It's by any means necessary, but always with me, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get an action-packed fight and I'm always going for that big knockout. And I know that you sat in the hotel room and watched the football last night. It must have been a, a pleasant night's sleep after that. <laughs> yeah, it was. I slept like a baby last night. It's, um, it's been a great start to the bank holiday weekend. Town, top of the league. Come on. And then uh, my job on Sunday. Me come out on top as well. And I'll be a tick off a great bank holiday. Good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. Matt, Fabio Wardley, very, very relaxed indeed. Not getting drawn into anything, is he? Sorry, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Is Always very the way it is. Very relaxed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool, calm. He's, he's got that. I think that's his kind of personality anyway. And I think he's, I think he's basking in his glory and confidence that he's the British champion and that Fraser's the challenger. And I think he feels that, okay, you're, you know, more experienced in boxing, the amateurs, but as a professional, I'm the British champion. I'm, I'm the one who's 
you know, got the belts here. You, you've got to come in and beat me. And I, I think he feels that he's, as a professional, too experienced and too, too accomplished. And could, could that give Fabio the edge on Sunday? Possibly. The way he conducts himself is impressive, isn't it? He wears the crown well. He's one of these people who, having won the title, you feel like he's kind of growing with it. And he enjoys fight week as discussed. His natural disposition means that he can have fun and not really expend any energy. Um, and that's a good thing, definitely. But none of that matters now. And that's the best thing about this. We've got, just got the full-blown jeopardy of heavyweight boxing awaiting us tomorrow. That's what we've got because... I it's remember a talking to domestic heavyweight showdown, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and you you nothing is guaranteed a heavyweight ever. We've seen it down the years so many times. This could go any number of ways, and none of them would come as a surprise. How does Fraser beat Fabio? Um, discipline, um, stamina, stick to the game plan. Um, don't fight with your heart on your sleeve. If he sticks to all the IQ and all the things that he's he's done to get him the expectation. He should win. Uh, Fabio, he's raw around the edges, he's, but he needs, he needs clipping. And he's putting in his place, and Fraser needs to be the man that dominates there. But he's got the, the only thing we don't know about is how he's going to take the pace, how the yeah. stamina is. Um, Fabio's shown that publicly. And we'll find out on Sunday night. It is a stellar undercard, top to bottom. We've said it, you've seen it there. There is so much to like, so much to look forward to. Matt, if you had to pick one fight from that undercard, which one would be the one to watch for you? From the undercard? I think Lowell and um, Vidal. I think that's the, the fight for me anyway. Obviously, the main event, the fight we're all here for. But going down the undercard, yeah, uh, Vidal and Lowell. Andy, what's your one to watch? Oh, it's Marco against Congo. Uh, I love that one. I absolutely love it. The, the support that Marco's got is incredible. It reminds us of a guy called Krejcinic Kato a few years ago. Same thing, Albanian fighter who used to sell out the York Hall. I wondered how that happened then. I still kind of wonder how this has happened now. The atmosphere for that is going to be absolutely tremendous. I think you're going to go Vidal Riley Mikel Owell, aren't you? I do, because I think that will be the most exposing fight. Uh, we'll see the development of a fighter or the breaking of a fighter. I think... Um, it's a great story to follow. The rest of them, every one of them, are, are, are amazing fights. You can't go to it, the toilet. It's must watch TV. You can't walk out the room to make a cup of tea. Once you're there, you're there. You're, you're in. Absolutely. You know what's coming now, though. Before we go, oh, I have to push you for your predictions. You can kind of fluff around the edges, and if you want to sit on the fence, Matt, you can kind of do it, but I'm going to ask you anyway. You can't escape anywhere. <laughs> yeah, who do I think is going to win which the main event? <laughs> we need to sort this listing thing out. <laughs> I don't know, it could go either way, really could. I mean, I think I would have said that I would have thought Fraser should win, given, given his accomplishment as an amateur and everything. But I don't know, I think he might have just missed the boat a little bit. I think he stayed amateur a little bit too long, and maybe Wardley's freshness could give him the edge. It really is one of those fights you can have an argument for either way, can't you, Andy? Yeah, you can. You can just take information and tailor it to your own argument and make it a convincing argument. I don't know which way it's going to go, but I'm going to say that whoever wins it is going to have to get off the floor to win it. That's what we like to see. Johnny, you're not escaping <laughs> this one. And you stood next door to me for a reason. You can't go anywhere. <laughs> I think Fraser, the reason being is because I know what he does, he does and how he sparred behind the scenes. If I didn't know that, I'd go for Fabio. But because I know that, I expect Fraser to get the job done. He's just got to do it publicly. We are so looking forward to it. You don't want to miss it. That's it from us here in North Greenwich. But we're going to be at the O2 Arena tomorrow night. Six o'clock, we'll be live on Sky Sports Action. We would love your company. We'll see you then.